traveler. Paimon. Kanich! Fancy meeting you here. We've actually been looking for you. I'll get straight to the point. I hear you accepted a proposal from Elder Trinidad. Oh! The, uh, Turnfire Knight, you mean. Uh, you were still his first choice. It's just... Oh, jeez. Um, it's not what it looks like, promise. Chill. It's cool. I only mention it because there's something you should know. And I suspect Elder Trinidad hasn't been completely forthcoming with you. His true intention is to resolve the Mountain King problem once and for all. Once and for all? You mean this'll be the last Turnfire Knight ever? That's right. He wants to use you to send the Mountain King to the Night Kingdom. To the Night Kingdom? You mean... To his death. Whoa, 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 are you serious right now? You shouldn't go blurting out accusations like that. I could get you in trouble. Too blunt? Okay. I'll phrase it more gently. There is potentially a possibility that Elder Trinidad may be hoping that during the course of the ceremony, you kill the Mountain King dead. But that's ridiculous! He told us the Mountain King is a living symbol of your tribe's glory! And that glory comes at a price. Oh, that's right. The Mountain King is a living symbol of our glory, but even this glory comes at a price. Ah, uh, yes, and Nana wasn't the first. Mm hmm. She likely won't be the last to lose her life either. Still, is killing the Mountain King really the only way? It seems so extreme! The Mountain King is a unique case when it comes to abyssal contamination. It's eaten away at him for so long that it has consumed him entirely, and the damage is irreversible. That evil power has both driven him insane and kept him alive over the centuries. So to look at it one way, once it's completely purged from his body, the Mountain King will finally be able to rest in peace. In past ceremonies, we've only purged around half of the abyssal power, this was to strike a balance, to keep him alive, but also keep him asleep. Trinidad didn't say anything about how much power he wanted us to purge, but he did say there were some more details to go over before the ceremony. Then it sounds like you'll know for sure soon enough. If he really asks us to kill the Mountain King, what should we do? I know this must come as quite a shock, so I suggest you act like you didn't hear anything for now. But would you have time to visit the Chief after your meeting with Elder Trinidad? I'd like to make a deal with you. What kind of deal? One that comes at a very reasonable price. I'm sure you have plenty of other questions, but we can talk more later. Good. See you soon. Mighty Outlanders, you have returned. Did you have a good rest? It was... Uh, pretty good, yeah. Glad to hear it. Things are progressing very smoothly on my end. Many of the Elders have heard of your heroic deeds, including the Chief. They all speak very favorably of you. There are still those who insist that the ceremony should be performed by the bearer of the Malipo name. <laughs> but they're just stuck in the past. We need to move with the times. Kamichi doesn't want to do it anyway. Exactly. Mm. So, now, it's time for us to discuss the finer details of the ceremony. We covered the fire lighting part of the proceedings yesterday. The next part is the purification of the Mountain King.
It's quite simple. You just need to use the sacred flame. We've done it plenty of times before, and it's always very routine. I'm sure you won't have any problems. One point I'd like to stress, though, is that you need to burn away as much of the abyssal energy as you possibly can. The more we dispel, the longer the Mountain King will remain asleep. Asleep, huh? Precisely. In previous years, the Flame Bearer has often been unable to dispel a sufficient amount of abyssal energy. That's the only reason why we have to perform the ceremony on a regular basis. But I understand that you have a lot of experience fighting against the Abyss, and you seemed to wield the Sacred Flame quite effortlessly yesterday. With your help, I'm optimistic this time we can dispel all the remaining Abyssal energy from the Mountain King's body, freeing us from this ever-looming threat for many years to come. Traveler? So this doesn't phase you at all, huh? You clearly have a lot of confidence in yourself. <laughs> That's all you really need to know? The ceremony's in three days. I'll come and fetch you when we're ready. In the meantime, feel free to take a look around our settlement. It would mean a lot to the elders if you got to know some of our people. And if you wouldn't mind helping them out with a few errands here and there, that would be even better. So now we have extra errands to run? Maybe we should add a little extra to the price. <laughs> Just a humble suggestion, that's all. It will help you gain the respect of our people, and as a mighty hero, I truly believe that's what you deserve. I'll be sticking around for the next few days, so if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Seems like Kanich was right. We should go meet up with him right away. Huh, you're here. Kanich! Elder Trinidad said that! I can tell. It's written on your faces. Is that the Traveler and Paimon? Uh, forgive me for not being there to welcome you on your arrival. That should have been my duty as Chief. Hello, Chief Waina. I only heard the news from Trinidad yesterday, so I asked Kinich to invite you over for a quick chat. <laughs> I believe Kinich has already filled you in, so I'll get straight to the point. Firstly, I fully endorse your appointment as flame bearers for the upcoming Turnfire Night. However, I would like to request that you take steps to ensure the Mountain King's safety. Every child of our tribe grows up hearing the tales of our heroes. From Yupanki, the Firebringer, to Burkina and the Mountain King who fought against the Abyss. This is our history and our heritage, the source of our pride and the center of our faith. To kill the Mountain King would be to destroy our spirit. I would never be able to face our ancestors in the Night Kingdom. Nana's death was a great tragedy, and I do not blame Trinidad for the actions he has taken. Nevertheless, I cannot allow any harm to come to the Mountain King. The very roots of our identity are at stake. <sighs> My honored guests, please give this matter your serious consideration. Uh, perhaps there is, but despite all our attempts to contain the situation over the years, we have not found it. Right now, I should like to hear where you stand on this matter. to think this through, that's all. Don't worry, we'll come up with something if we put our heads together. Thank you both. There are still three days left before the ceremony. I hope they will bring you clarity. So, Kanich, earlier you were saying that... Let's walk and talk. I'll show you around the tribe. That works too. Paimon needs to get some air after this. Paimon finally understands why you turned Trinidad down. 
You knew what he was planning, didn't you? That's why you didn't want to be the flame bearer this time, because it's a double-edged sword! The whole Mora thing is just a sneaky excuse. Double-edged sword is right. But my response wasn't merely an excuse. To solve this exceptional problem, an exceptional price must be paid. I'm working on it. Really? Well, come on then, let's hear it! In a moment. Didn't you have a question you were about to ask me? Oh, yeah. What was it again? Oh, right! We need to talk about a how. He's completely unhinged! I agree that he has a problem. He needs disciplining, so I hired him a teacher. You got him a teacher? Oh, Paimon would love to see him get scolded for bad behavior. Anyway, moving on. When we ran into a how, he said you two were investigating some abyss thing together. Is that related to the whole Mountain King situation? Yes, that's the angle I've been working on. I'm a Saurian hunter, but I occasionally hunt the abyss too. One time I was pursuing some purple demonic dogs when I accidentally entered a hidden space. I did some research after the fact. Apparently they're known as beastly rifts, and there are many of them of all different sizes. That's where those purple dogs were coming from. So... So, if we can locate one of these beastly rifts, clear the monsters out, and move the Mountain King inside, he'd be able to continue living, but without posing a threat to the tribe. Whoa, that sounds kind of crazy. Would it really work? It's not without its risks, of course. There's a lot of unknowns in the equation. For instance, for all we know, a prolonged period inside the rift could make the Mountain King's condition worse. Still, we desperately need something like this, even just as a temporary measure. You've seen the conflict the issue is causing in our tribe for yourselves, and believe me, it's been a long time coming. The Chief is adamant about keeping the Mountain King alive. Whatever happens. Paimon can understand. It's less about the Mountain King and more about preserving your culture and heritage. Yes, but on the flip side, you've got people like Elder Trinidad, who is more concerned about protecting the people he cares about now and into the future. And he has every right to take that view. It's one thing to try and preserve the last remnants of a glorious past, but making your kin pay the price for it? No one can seriously tell them that's a fair trade. You're right. There's no easy answers here. Let's leave that to one side for a moment and assume we go with your plan. How do you actually intend to find one of these beastly rifts? Because at least in our experience, the dogs open the rifts when they want to attack us, not the other way around. I think I know a way. You have any better ideas? Not at the moment, but... It just feels like using the power of the Abyss for our own ends isn't gonna end well. After all, the Abyss is what turned the Mountain King into a monster in the first place! People are gonna think you've lost your marbles! If it doesn't end well, then that's the price we pay. Everything in the world comes at a price. Even when Yuponki, the Firebringer, stole the Turnfire, it cost him dearly. The Mountain King's erratic outbursts have brought tensions within the tribe to a boiling point. Unless this gets resolved quickly, everyone will be stuck in a stalemate. Alright, so what's this deal you wanted to make with us? We're hardly experts on exploiting abyssal power. All I need you to do is keep people away from me. I'm getting harassed on a daily basis by people trying to convince me to be the flame bearer. I can't afford to waste all my energy dealing with them. If you help me out, there will be a gift for you in return. Ooh, what kind of gift? Something well worth your while, I'd say. Just keep doing what you've been doing. Integrate yourself with the tribe's people, so everyone comes to terms with the fact that we have a new flame bearer. That way, I won't have an endless stream of people coming to beg me to join the ceremony, and I can focus on finding a way to summon the Beastly Rift. Then, when the day of the ceremony comes, we'll move the Mountain King into his new home. That sounds pretty crazy. Even for a daredevil like you, that's dangerous. And even if it works, 
What if neither Chief Wyna nor Elder Trinidad are happy with it? Have you thought about what you'd do then? At least the two of them would finally be on the same side of the issue. Leaving only me on the opposing side. The tribe needs leaders like them far more than a Saurian hunter for hire like me. <laughs> Can I take that to mean that we have a deal? For sure. And who knows? Maybe we'll come up with an even better solution to all of this in the next couple of days. Great. Well, for the next couple of days, please spend some time among the tribe and lend a hand wherever you can. I'm sure everyone will be swept off their feet when they meet our new flame bearer. Good luck to us both. Kenichi's back. Boony, how can you call the Mountain King a monster? Because he hurt a lot of people, and look what happened to Nana. But it wasn't on purpose. The Mountain King is sick, that's all. He's been hurt by the Abyss. That's true, but the fact remains that he's now a threat to all of us. How can you be so harsh to someone who's sick? If you don't take back what you just said, I don't know if we can carry on being friends. Toba, Huni, what's wrong? Huni's saying nasty things about the Mountain King. It's not right. He's our hero. <laughs> Once upon a time, maybe, but not anymore. <sighs> Yesterday, maybe, but not anymore. Toba? Oh, fine. I guess my dad is right. Things change, and you just have to accept it and move forward. As of today, our friendship is over. There's no going back. Oh, come on, cut it out, you two. We have some great news to tell you. The Traveler is gonna be the flame bearer for the next Turnfire Night. She's gonna do a beautiful ceremony and cure the Mountain King's illness for good. What? Really? So that's what my dad wanted to talk to you about? To be fair, from what we saw the other day, you are pretty good at climbing cliffs. Probably just as good as Kanich. Wait. Speaking of Kanich, where even is that guy? Oh, yeah. Good question. Is he not coming to the ceremony anymore? We can get him to come, but if he catches you two fighting again, he won't be happy. He'll be sure to give you both a piece of his mind. Oh, we can't let that happen. I've never even spoken to him before. I can't afford to make such a bad first impression. I didn't mean to argue with Toba. All he said was that the Mountain King has done some pretty bad things. He was the one who turned it into a fight. Yeah, if you weren't friends, there's no way Toba would have come to look for the baby Saurians with you. Uh, all right. Well, because it's the Traveler and Paimon and Kanich, I'm sorry, Toba. I'm sorry for all the mean things I said about the Mountain King. Dad just really misses Nana. And I was really upset that she's gone, too. Huh? Oh. Uh. I shouldn't have spoken to you the way I did either. It wasn't very nice of me. For the Traveler and Paimon Kanich and for Nana. I'm sorry, too, Huni. That's more like it. Now you're best friends again! Guess so. Toba, if I ever say something mean about the Mountain King in the future, I'll make sure I say it to someone else, and not you. I'd better go buy some colored cloth for my dad now. He needs it for turn fire night. Let's play again some other time. See you, Toba. See you, Traveler and Paimon. 
Okay. I'll head home as well then. See you next time. Okay, take care, you two. <sighs> Even though they said they're sorry, it looks like their friendship isn't as strong as it was before. Hmm. Let's just hope we can solve this once and for all. Come on, let's move on. A rehearsal for the Turnfire Night Dance. Ooh, there's a dance involved? Kaima wants to learn too! You don't know it? Ah, I guess you're not from these parts, huh? It's rare to see a new face around the tribe these days. I thought everyone would be keeping away. Uh, why do you say that? Because of the Turnfire Night, of course. The Mountain King could wake up at any time. That's why we're holding an emergency ceremony. This isn't one of those fun and games festivals. For outsiders, it might even be a little dangerous. Well, did you know that the flame bearer this time is actually going to be an outsider? Oh, I did hear about that. It's a first for sure. I would have loved to meet them in person. What? Oh, it's you? Man, oh man. <laughs> well, this is a nice surprise. It's funny. I was just thinking that I'll probably miss out on meeting the new flame bearer since I'm not taking part this time around. Then suddenly, there you are. <laughs> Must be my lucky day. <laughs> um, you're not taking part in the Turnfire Night? How come? You're not an outsider too, are you? <laughs> you must be joking. Watch this. Not bad, right? Yeah, I'm considered one of the better-looking guys who dances beneath the pillars of the Sacred Flame. Been doing it a few years. Always gets the ladies out to watch. <laughs> oh, very impressive. So why'd you quit? Well, I feel like the whole Mountain King situation is getting more and more precarious. It's just not safe here anymore. One of our elders' Saurian companions even lost her life not long ago. The question is... What are we going to do about this in the long term? But our leaders don't have any answers for us. They're probably too busy fighting about it amongst themselves. The way things are going, it's only a matter of time before it gets violent. So I figured, you know what? Now's as good a time as any to get away for a little while. Go do some exploring. You look a little disappointed. Disappointed? Nah, it's a great opportunity to go see the world. As every male scion of the canopy knows, wherever you are and wherever you go, the only way is forwards. We take pride in that. I won't forget my roots. <laughs> I managed to get in touch with the Saurian Relics Association. They gave me a simple test. Find a decent quality relic, and they'll make me a member. What's the Saurian Relics Association? You've never heard of it? It's a group of amateur history enthusiasts who do research on the ancient Saurian era. They're all about collecting relics and remnants from that age. Speaking of which, the guy who was Flamebearer before you, I've heard that his Saurian buddy comes from that time. A how? A how's a relic from an ancient Saurian civilization? Oh, yeah, him. So you know those two already, huh? Then do you know how they met? It was deep inside some mysterious ruin, and they signed a contract there. The association folks say that the kind of contract usually comes with a huge hit at cost. Really? That sounds ominous. Who knows? But if it's true, Kanich can probably handle it. He knows what he's doing with weighing up contracts and costs and stuff. I doubt he'd make a contract that doesn't benefit him. Strangely enough, I actually happened upon a strange mural a while back. And it looked to me like it was depicting a Saurian and a human involved in some kind of Saurian-era contract ritual. Oh, does that count as a relic, then? You bet it does. I was all ready to go take a picture of it and use it as my entry ticket to the association. But after all the abyssal activity recently, 
I heard that area's been overrun by monsters. The best laid plans, huh? I'll just have to wait and see if things improve. Or... You look like you know your way around a fight. I don't suppose there's any chance you'd be able to help? If all you need to get is a pitcher, that should be pretty achievable, right? The Traveler deals with monsters all the time. It's a piece of cake! Wait, you're seriously gonna help me out? Come on, it's no big deal. Compared to some of the things we've been roped into before, this is nothing. Pyro Archon above, you two have hearts of gold, you know that? You're the kind of people who could dive into the turn fire deep in the bowels of the Night Kingdom, and it wouldn't burn a single hair off your head. Of course it is. All right, come with me. I'll show you the way. There it is. It's inside these ruins. As you can see, the place is crawling with monsters. Alrighty then. Stay back and take cover, Tiago. This could get dangerous. We'll take care of them. Great minds think alike. <laughs> I'm not about to cramp your style. The wind knows me. As one with wind and cloud. Gather. Order guide you. Gotcha. <sighs> that should be the last of them. It's a good thing Tiago had the sense to stay in his hiding place or things could have gotten really hairy for him. Hey, look! That's gotta be it, right? Definitely looks like a mural. Hmm, true. Now that you mention it, most ancient murals take up a whole huge wall. This looks more like someone with a paintbrush got bored and started doodling. It does match the story he told us, though. There's a Saurian, and a human, so... Is that supposed to be what an ancient contract ritual looked like? Eh, whatever. We're not here to decipher it. Just photograph it. That's a wrap. Let's take it back to Tiago. been robbed? Oh, Ponche. And I thought my luck was bad. Oh, I put blood, sweat, and tears into that. And now I've got nothing to show for it. Some gap-toothed goon stole it from me. Tiago, is this the picture you were looking for? Let me take a look. Uh, yep. That's the one! Pyro Archon above, you two are superhumans! Hey, Ponche! Come and say hi to these guys. They're gonna be the new flame bearers, and they're tough as nails. Wait, are you the Traveler and Paimon? Huh? You already know each other? I don't think so. My nephew Toba's been telling everyone about you. He says you're crazy strong, super friendly, that you helped him out, and that you're gonna be our flame bearers this turn fire night. Oh, so you're Toba's uncle. Great to meet you, sir. Sounds like we've managed to make a bit of a name for ourselves. <laughs> Toba's not wrong, my friend. These two are honestly some of the nicest, most genuine people I've ever met. Everyone speaks incredibly highly of them. Seriously. 
If you're comfortable telling them about what happened, I guarantee you they'll sort it out in no time. Really? All I want is to get the fruits of my labor back. Allow me to explain. Ponche is a well-known scholar within our tribe, author of the widely acclaimed book, Yupanki's Turnfire. Unfortunately, the book was stolen by a treasure hoarder a few hours ago. I spent years of my life researching that book. I visited every last ruin, interviewed every descendant of every hero in our history. On the word Malipo alone, I covered at least five different interpretations of the meaning based on accounts from different villages. It was an unparalleled masterpiece. And now it's all gone. That little goon ambushed me during my morning walk. He snatched all of my belongings, including my entire manuscript. That book was everything to him. It's like they robbed him of his soul when they took it. Look at him. Lost and listless. He's a shell of the man he was. Dear honored guests of our clan, I am but a helpless old student. If only for Toba and Tiago's sake, please help me, I beg of you. See what I mean, Ponche? Now you've run into these two, your luck's about to change, big time. I don't know if he's still there, but come on, I'll take you. things back what do you want now you old bum god you're a waste of space prepare to get shoved butt first into a tree hollow oh what's this brought a little bodyguard with you huh all right let's see what you've got what's this eat dirt suckers Warriors, heroes, gods, and kings, I can't run any longer. Please, I don't have your stuff anymore. Have mercy. Oh, yeah? Well, where is it then? I... I threw it away. You threw it away? The old bum's bag didn't have a single mora in it. Just a tatty old book, worn out pens, and some old rags. All that time lying in wait was for nothing. I was so mad, I just threw all of it away. Hmm. Is that really the truth? Okay, then. Where did you throw it away? The same place you found me. Look, I swear on the Pyro Archon, it's the truth. May all my worldly possessions be turned to ash by turn fire if I'm lying. Okay, that's a pretty strong oath. What do we do now? It sounds like he's telling the truth. Right. Let's hope nobody gets to the book before we do. We'll never get it back then. Although the turn fire is a heroic symbol in Hoitzatlan, it always comes with the more ominous implication of eventual tragedy. This holds true for all bearers of this ancient name in recorded history. Each one of them died of non-natural causes, as if the specter of the Turnfire was always lurking in the background. This appears to suggest the existence of some higher power that is always watching the name-bearer, examining their actions, and eventually demanding payment in return. None can escape this payment, unless, perhaps, they could honestly swear by Turnfire to never make a single mistake in their entire life. You punkies Turnfire. What an incredible work on ancient name philology. I can't believe it was just lying there for me to take. 
Let me see. The author is... Panche. Nice. A gentleman and a scholar. Uh, silence, book muncher. The great Kahula How will suffer your droning voice no longer. Do you truly find no joy at all in perusing such rich historical records? <laughs> joy? What joy is there in this pointless drivel? Well, it makes a pretty shocking prediction. Every bearer of the ancient name Malipo eventually meets a grisly end. Maybe that's the price you pay for the name that means price? What? You're saying Kenichi will die a violent death? <laughs> so I'll finally get to take over his body? When? When will that glorious day arrive? The great Kahula How demands to know! Wow, you are just irredeemable, aren't you? An agent of chaos down to the core. You make us Abyss Order folks look like saints in comparison. Uh, silence, maggot! To presume that anyone compares your kind with the great Kahula How is sheer vanity! And if that day ever comes, oh, your doom will soon follow. <laughs> You don't need to lecture me about Doomsday. Here's what I know, based on countless historical texts. All civilizations will be reduced to rubble by the passage of time. From ancient kingdoms, to heavenly thrones, to worlds beyond, there are no exceptions. But from the ruins of every civilization, the dust will rise and never settle thus transcending the confines of time. That dust is what we call a civilization's spirit. And you, great Kahul Ahau, are one such speck of dust from a bygone age. I've paid dearly for the chance to observe you up close. Now, let me take a good look at you. We'll see whether any memories of that age still remain inside you. We're so sorry, Mr. Ponche, but we couldn't find your manuscript anywhere. Does that mean all of my hard work was for nothing? You gotta stay positive, Ponche. You might have lost the book, but the brains behind it are still intact. Surely you remember the main points, at least? The whole reason I worked so hard to get it finished before the Turnfire Night is because I hoped that maybe it might help us find a way through these trying times. But now... Well, not exactly, but I thought my research might at least be a starting point. Oh, really? So what did you find out in your research? I think the key to all of this lies in the power of Malipo. Panche, you know as well as anyone that ancient names don't hold any real power. Symbolic power doesn't count. You're right, but Malipo may be a special case. Given that it first arose in the era of the first Pyro Archon, it might contain remnants of Shibalanke's power. Yeah, I remember that story. My grandpa told it to me when I was a little kid. Maybe you're the special case. Most kids stop believing in that stuff by your age. I'm not talking about childhood superstitions here. There is evidence. Like what? Like the fact that the Mountain King is still alive. Everyone attributes that to the power of the Abyss. But there's more to it than that. The key factor is that Burkina summoned the power of Malipo at the cost of his own life. If you don't believe me, then answer me this. How many other creatures can you think of who lived longer, not shorter, after being contaminated by the Abyss? Um, Traveler, different situation but similar idea. Doesn't this remind you of the Hilly? So... I came to the conclusion that Malipo must refer to some mysterious ritual involving a tit-for-tat exchange. It began with the first Pyro Archon, fell with the Grand Alliance, 
then was buried in the Night Kingdom. And now, it awaits the call of its new bearer. Hey, hey. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, Ponche, but you seem to be getting a little overexcited. I'm sorry. I was originally planning on presenting my findings to Kanich. I'd hoped he would be attending the upcoming ceremony. Sounds to me like you dreamed up one fanciful theory to support another. Uh, Kanich, what are you doing here? I more or less finished what I was doing, so I came to have a quick catch-up. Now a good time? Kanich! I'm onto something! I haven't worked out all the details, but... but... you have to attend the Turnfire Night. Ponche here has done a lot of research on the history of the Turnfire, and thinks he might have found a way for you to solve the problem. I'll be there, Ponche. Let's go. Here will do. Yeah. I'd like your help giving it a trial run tomorrow. If that works, we have our plan come turnfire night. Sounds like you're not considering Ponte's idea. You heard him. He hasn't worked out the details yet. We need a more practical solution with concrete steps to follow. Yet? Are you saying you think he might actually be onto something? I think it's possible, based on something I know about the war 500 years ago. Burkina didn't fall to the abyss. He was killed by the Mountain King in an episode of madness. In his final moments, Burkina made the fateful decision to not fight back, and instead pass his blood and power on to the Mountain King. Maybe he thought the Mountain King was stronger than him, and more valuable to the tribe. Or maybe it was just out of loyalty to his friend. Either way, I can believe the Turnfire was involved. Whether you think his sacrifice triggered it, or his fate was sealed from the moment he took the Malipo name, it makes sense to me. How can you drop these truth bombs with such a straight face? This is what I've gleaned from my many interactions with the Mountain King. His mind is so disordered. It took some time to piece it all together. The story Elder Trinidad told you was the more palatable version of events. The truth is even darker. The Mountain King's mind isn't just disordered. He is suffering and feels great shame. I believe he wants to be put out of his misery. What? Then... then what should we do? Should we grant him his wish? Of course not. We should help him move to a new home. It's the only practical solution. The Mountain King is a hero to my tribe. An object of worship, even. Ending his life would be like desecrating a statue. Still, He's been the cause of multiple disasters, and we can't afford to have any more. Ugh. Practical solutions hurt Paimon's brain. Can we follow our hearts next time? <laughs> then let's break for the day. I've already found a suitable venue for tomorrow.
you're here. Very punctual. Oh, so the gruesome twosome come crawling back. <laughs> you're gonna make amends after the gross irreverence you displayed last time. <laughs> Very well. The Almighty Dragon Lord Kahula How shall grant you the audience that you seek. Now pucker up and kiss our feet. <laughs> Kanich, didn't you say you found him a teacher? He's just as out of control as ever! Hey! No one gets to discipline the almighty Dragon Lord Kahula How! No one! Maybe because I've never had a gentle natured companion like Paimon to compare against. It. Is that a compliment? Yeah. I see what I'm missing out on now. And it's a lot. Kanich! Oh, we could drown this measly flying ant in one droplet of spit! How dare you compare her to the almighty dragon lord, Kahula How? Oh, just wait till I possess your dead body! I will commit heinous atrocities! Tear down your legacy! Destroy your reputation! Wreak havoc on your... Oh. Traveler, Paimon, let's get down to business. Once we've opened the beastly rift, you're welcome to toss a how in there for a couple of days. With pleasure. You don't need to ask twice. I got my hands on this device in a trade. It's meant as bait, but it'll also stabilize the abyssal energy. The rift towns will tear through space to get to this. Once they're here, we take them out and claim the rift for ourselves. You'll find out soon enough. First, let's try this out. They'll tear you to pieces given half the chance, so be careful. Into the wind! Here comes the catch! Busted! Locked up! Kinich? I'm a man of my word. In fact, I'd say I under-promised and over-delivered. Nifty little gizmo, isn't it? I take it this is your true form? Now that our deal is complete, it's time to start the next phase of our relationship. I made a promise to the great Kahula How, and now I'm here to seize your body for his use. Cliché, I know. The hero's trusted partner sells him out to the Abyss in a shocking act of betrayal. Cue bad guy speech and drawn out death sequence. Huh? Angel? Huh? Huh? What are you two doing here? Oh, Mr. Kinich, this is not what we agreed on. Traveler, this is the gift I got you. I know you're looking for intel on the Abyss Order, so I thought he might be of use to you. But it looks like you've already met. Yikes. Frosty reception. Gotta say, I kinda pictured this moment going a little differently. Tears of joy welling up in your eyes as you say the words, It's good to see you again, old friend. Don't be ridiculous! Sounds like you've been reading too many romance novels. There we have it. Change is inevitable and nothing lasts forever. What a pity. Well then, time for you to meet the new me. This time, please call me Sanka. Sanka? Aha! So you're a glasses guy! You tricked Huni and Toba into telling you a bunch of stories! 
What does it matter? A name is a superficial label. It's what's deep down inside that counts. And I've shown you the deepest parts of me. That would explain a lot. Why else would you show up here and start acting like a wise guy? You looking for a fight? Eh, I'll pass. I do rather like you, as I've said before. But my one quibble is that you really don't know your own strength. Wait. Of course. You're the one behind all the recent abyss activity. Let Paimon guess. You've been provoking the Mountain King, too. Haven't I told you before? I'm not part of the inner circle who do our highness's bidding. My interests are far more low stakes. I spend my time digging for truth in ancient doodads and books. You really think a bench warmer like me is capable of more than that? I investigated him. He's not connected to the recent events. Just happens to be in the area. So, I struck a deal with him. He helps me summon a rift. I allow him to do some... historical research. But that's all over. And now Kinich wants to hand me over to you. While well, I was hoping this would be an opportune moment to whisk away his body. That would have given me some more time to study the great Kahula Hao. But now I've run into you, which is just my luck. Or maybe I've incited the wrath of the Turnfire, and this is the price I have to pay. But I don't understand. What did I do wrong? Wait, does that count? Hmm, let me think. Uh, how? You are the worst of the worst! Colluding with the Abyss Order against Kanich? How could you betray your partner? Uh, there is no betrayal. The almighty dragon lord Kahula How is a partner to no one. Don't worry, I told him to act as bait. Yes, and you should have picked a bigger fish. The Abyss Order? Ha! <laughs> what a joke. Not even a match for our lowly servant. I put up with this toad's croaking for days, and it was all for nothing! It looks like your disciplinary measures have been less than effective, Mr. Enjo. Ah, what did you expect? Behavioral rehab isn't really our thing. Otherwise, we might as well change our name from the Abyss Order to the Abyss Boarding School. The abysmal disorder would suit you better. Uh, Kanish! Dispose of him! He is of no further use to us! Traveler? You see, this is why I like you. Still, you shouldn't underestimate me just because I'm a lowly clerk. I could never beat you in a straight-up fight. But when it comes to running away, I won't lose to anyone! Do me a favor, and remember how fast I disappear! Maybe then you'll show me a little respect next time. Darn! He got away again! Couldn't you have stopped him? It's alright. He's not worth our time and energy. Besides, it seems like he's in debt to a lot of people. I'm sure they'll keep him busy. <sighs> if you say so. Still, Paimon's kind of surprised that you actually struck a deal with someone from the Abyss Order. To borrow that guy's words, names are superficial labels. Whether you call it the Abyss Order or anything else, it's a broad generalization at best. Think of it like apples that have fallen from a tree. If you tasted each one, you'd find that they're all at different stages of ripening. Even the unripe fruit blown off its branch before it's fully grown can still be brewed into a fine wine. Everything has its use. Huh. Well, in that specific sense, maybe Enjo's not such a bad apple. Not rotten to the core, at least. Of course! Only the almighty Dragon Lord, Kahula How, is rotten to the core and evil beyond redemption! Ugh. So what exactly are you anyway? You're definitely the evilest little thing Paimon's ever met. Don't worry. He can't hurt a fly. Hmm, you could say that. Uh, Paimon heard that those kinds of...
of contracts might come with a terrible cost attached. Is that true? Such as a howl watching me like a ravenous vulture? 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 Uh, we are the Dragon Supreme! Sovereign ruler of the Nation of Flame! Let's pick this up another time. It's getting kind of late. You should go back and get some rest. Big day ahead. Tomorrow's Turnfire Night. Time to light the sacred flame and burn away the filth for a legendary 500-year-old warrior. Oh, yeah. Hearing you lay it out like that is making Paimon a little nervous. For all the work we've put in, it all comes down to tomorrow night. We have to make sure we solve this problem once and for all. Then it can't hurt to say this one more time. Good luck to us both. See you tomorrow. At long last, you're back. I hear you've done much for our people these last few days. Everyone has nothing but praise for you. Many young people have heard the rumors, too. They're all eager to meet our new flame bearer. Well, they won't have to wait for long. It's almost time for the ceremony. We really hope we can resolve the Mountain King situation quickly and smoothly. Seems like a lot of people have been worrying about it, huh? <laughs> well, it's nearly time. So, if you're ready, then follow me to the ceremony site. Honored guests have arrived. I have heard much about your fine work over the past few days. I hope you'll allow us to thank you properly after tonight's ceremony. Don't worry about it. Getting this huge venue ready must have been a huge task. No need to make extra work for yourselves on our account. Oh, if it means getting the Mountain King issue resolved, no cost is too great to bear. A resolution will come in due course. But every great fire starts as a tiny spark. We must take it one step at a time. No one would disagree with you if that were possible, Chief. But it's been far too long since we've seen a real step forward. Look around you. Can't you see how our numbers have dwindled since the last turn fire night? The ceremony was arranged on short notice. Many are away from home and could not make it back in time. That may be so, but still. Good evening, Traveler and Paimon. Kamich! Not a moment too soon. Chief Wayna, Elder Trinidad, could you give us a minute? I'd like to give the Traveler a few pointers as the previous flame bearer. Uh, very well, but make it quick. Let me know when you're done and we will begin the ceremony. Let's step to the side. Has anyone gone over the key steps of the ceremony with you yet? Yeah, Elder Trinidad did, but, uh, Paimon seems to have forgotten them. What a surprise! The flying ant has an ant-sized brain. If you don't want your tongue to be burned off by the sacred flame tonight, I suggest you stay quiet. <sighs> See those sacred flame pillars? Once you've lit the fire, go light each one up in turn. Once that's done, head down into the cave where the Mountain King slumbers, light the braziers along the way, then bring the flame to the final altar. Then the ceremony is complete. That sounds simple enough. The process isn't complicated, but remember, you mustn't turn back at any point. If you miss a pillar, you can't light the next one, then come back to it. You have to keep moving forward, or it's seen as disrespecting our ancestors. If that happens, you won't receive the blessing of the turn fire, and you'll have to start over. 
I made you a diagram that summarizes the steps. Take a look. So that's our part. What about you? I'll be with you the whole way. And once you've lit the altar, I'll start summoning the rift. You can leave that side of things to me. Just focus on your part. Okay. We'll try to remember all that and get it right the first time. Ready when you are. But I think I saw Huni and the others just now. Maybe you should say hi before you start. Might make you less nervous. Just tell the chief when you're ready. doing is all in order I'm counting on you don't forget what we talked about by past fuel and present flame life marches ever on my brothers and sisters the time has come to light the fire once again and let the Turnfire night shine bright in Hoitzitlan. Go get the sacred flight. Nicely done. Off to a good start. Great stuff. You're over halfway. Keep it up. One more to go. Come on, one last push. The final sacred flame pillar is up ahead. Great. All the pillars are alight. Next, it's down into the canyon and head for the Mountain King's cave. Almost there. The cave is just up ahead. This presence is growing strong. We should deal with the contamination first.
Wind Strider. There's the altar of the sacred flame. Remember, light up the torches around it first. him. Kangamato, king of the Yumkasaurs from 500 years ago. He's very powerful. Paimon can tell. He is huge. Let's tread carefully. We don't want to wake him up. You've made it at last. You did even better than I expected. Traveler, now comes the final and most important step of the ceremony. Please use the power of the sacred flame to cleanse the Mountain King of Abyssal Filth. There's no need this time. Hmm? Such strong Abyssal power. What is that thing? Kinich, what is the meaning of this? Is that... A beastly rift! Chief Wyna, Elder Trinidad, this is about to get a little dangerous. You should step back. What do you think you're doing? Solving the Mountain King issue. You mean, by having him torn to pieces by rift hounds? No, stop! We can't let that happen! Foolish locusts! Ugh, can't you see? We're trying to shove your locust king into the beastly rift! But... but... I'm sorry, Chief Wyna and Elder Trinidad. This is the only way. Can you promise me that no harm will come to the Mountain King? I can't guarantee it, but I'm fairly confident. Traveler, this is not what we agreed on! You must cleanse the Mountain King of every last trace of abyssal contamination! Okay, I see what this is. You've been in cahoots this whole time! You imbecile! What have you done? Oh no! The device is destroyed! You forced my hand. I had no choice. Elder Trinidad? What are you doing? No! The Mountain King is waking up! He will cause even more casualties! Everyone! Out! Now! <laughs> oh, it seems that there is only one way to awaken you all from your willful blindness. More sacrifices must be made. <laughs> Ah, 
Take me, O oh Mountain King! Take me as your next sacrifice! Everyone's still outside. We have to keep the Mountain King here. Give me a hand. Adorn my knight! Beavers are about to get dicey. Gotcha! Target acquired! Watch out for the fruits he's spinning out. You can use those against him. Yeah, that's it! Fuel and present flame. Life marches ever on. Oh, Burkina, I must atone. Patience. We will answer to the fire for all our deeds. Even if one day I fall behind. Never look back. Keep moving forward, as we are now. Live with your guilt and shame. This is the price to pay. Heir to the Turnfire, please use my ruined vessel to train the heroes of the future. The will of Kongamato will march ever on till the abyss is stamped out. Oh, pretty eventful day yesterday, huh? Lyman wonders how things are doing now. Let's go ask the chief! Traveler, you've come at just the right time. I have some good news for you. Trinidad's condition is stabilized. He suffered burns on much of his body, but we believe he'll survive. Guess that's the best news we could hope for. Trinidad, is this the scions of the canopy's adventurous spirit in action? We're simply not afraid to charge ahead into the unknown. He's fine. Don't worry. He's gone to check on the Mountain King. Something most mysterious has happened. After the incident yesterday, a transparent shell is formed around the Mountain King's body. We don't understand the mechanism behind it but the shell appears to insulate him against the influence of abyssal power. It is somewhat akin to a scab, in that it stops the abyssal energy within him from bleeding out, while also preventing further abyssal energy from seeping in and infecting him. We've never seen anything like it. The tribe's most senior elders believe it was caused when he was burned by the sacred flame, similar to the way burned wood becomes charcoal. I think their theory makes sense, after all. We've never thrown the Mountain King directly into the Sacred Flame before. Wow. So it's made a barrier against Abyssal energy? That's... a, a good thing, right? It's practically a miracle from what we've seen of it so far. It means that the Mountain King's level of Abyssal energy is now stable. 
No longer will we need to perform an annual cleansing ceremony. Wow, that's amazing! I know what you're thinking. The young people in the tribe are already speculating that yesterday's ceremony was a Churnfire night like none other in our history. Because you and Kenich, you summoned the very flame that appears in our ancient legends. A great transparent ball of fire. And that fire is what saved the Mountain King. Oh, so that was the real Turnfire? <laughs> I may be the chief of this tribe, but I've only ever known the Turnfire as a concept in our legends. I cannot answer that question. If anyone can answer it, I suspect it would be the bearer of the Malipo name. He is in the Mountain King's cave as we speak. Ah, so can each then. Why don't we go see how he's doing? Hey yourselves. <laughs> you two doing okay after yesterday? We were gonna ask you the same question. You scared Paimon half to death when you rushed into the fire! Sorry. I couldn't just stand and watch the Mountain King get burned alive. So you thought you'd try and extinguish the sacred flame with Dendro? Or is that an attempt to make the almighty Dragon Lord Kahulahau die of laughter? <sighs> The Sacred Flame only possesses a fraction of the Pyro Archon's power. It's not as if I was fighting the Pyro Archon herself. Kanich, when you went into the flames, were you intending to... uh... Intending to what? To... um... Do the same thing as Burkina. Sacrifice myself? Of course not. My focus was on keeping the Mountain King alive, not on what it would cost. But now I'm curious. What made you think I was going to sacrifice myself? Well, because everyone's saying the Turnfire is what saved the King last night. And Ponche's theory was that summoning the Turnfire is a tit-for-tat exchange, right? So, Paimon thought you decided to pay for it with your life. So you've heard that rumor too. I'm afraid I can't say for sure. What happened yesterday was a first for me, too. Well, even if you don't know, there's probably no one in the world who does. What I would say is, if that really was the power of the Turnfire, I'd sooner believe that the Mountain King summoned it himself. The Mountain King? Then what price did he pay? The core meaning of price is not atonement or compensation, but what you're willing to give up in order to obtain what you want. It's easy to die for your sins. Much harder to live with the guilt and keep on going. In the end, the Mountain King chose the latter option. For Burkina and for the tribe. That's the price he paid. Alright, so how is the Mountain King doing now? Health-wise, there's nothing to worry about. He'll enter a fighting stance whenever we set foot in his territory. But his attacks are gentler now and not as crazed as before. Like he said yesterday, he just intends to be a sparring partner for people to practice with. Yeah, I tried communicating with him again, but he didn't respond. We dare say that Locust King has well and truly lost its mind. The lights are on, but nobody is home. Its body remains fighting fit thanks to the perverse power of the Abyss, but time has been less kind to its soul. It was ground to a pulp long ago. But we saw him come back to his senses yesterday. That was merely one last burst of brain activity before it croaked. As you humans would say, it went out with a bang. Oh, come on! Stop being such a doomer! Paimon bets the Mountain King has finally let go of the tragedies of the past now, and is focusing on moving forward. 
That's why he doesn't have time to chat with us. He's too busy thinking about the future. <laughs> well, at least it means my fellow tribes people can move forward now, too. Thank you for your help, Traveler. I owe you one. Yeah, that's right. You caught Enjo for us, remember? But he ended up being completely useless. It's not a fair trade if you lost out. Ah, that's on him. It's not your fault he's useless. Besides, we're friends now. You don't know us anything. Friends? <laughs> but your friendship is an even more valuable gift. I can't in good conscience accept it for free. So, promise me. If you need anything in the future, you'll come to me. For you, I'll do anything. <clears throat> so, in the end, only poor little Hooney got the sad ending? Yeah, everyone's happy except me. First Nana, then my dad. Why does everyone in my family have to suffer? Hooney, it'll be okay. Your dad will get better soon. Toba, you're my friend, so I shouldn't say this to your face. But it was all the Mountain King's fault. Huh? Now hold your horses, kiddo. If you promise not to fight, Uncle Sanko will tell you a story. Okay, before you roll your eyes out of your skull, I promise you can trust me. I almost got my eyebrows burned off by the turn fire after last time. That's why I came back to make it up to you. All right. I'll just get to the point. Do you know what Uncle Sanka loves the most about your people? Uh, what? Your extreme sports. Huh? On my first day here, I got hit by someone falling out of the sky. I believe you call it bungee jumping? It's a dangerous sport to be sure, but the courage it took to make the jump impressed the heck out of me. So, I introduced myself to the jumper, we made friends, and I even helped treat her wounds. Oh, such a nice friend. Of course. Anyway, the good times didn't last, because I got captured by a powerful foe, so we had to part ways for a while. In the hands of the enemy, I was scorned, scolded, and nearly given away as a gift. Oh, it was so humiliating. A horrible experience to look back on. Why does Uncle Sanka always have to suffer, I thought. So I feel your pain, Huni. I was in the same position. But in the end, I made it through, and I left all of those painful memories in the past. I even managed to reunite with my friend. Uh, is that it? The moral of the story is to look forward in life, right? Yeah, we've heard that one millions of times. Sorry, Uncle Sanka, but you're not cut out to be a teacher. Very smart, Hooney, but not quite smart enough. What I'm trying to tell you is that after I reunited with my friend, I found her injuries were all healed, but she really missed her family. So, I thought you might like to see her too. She's right behind you. Turn around and see. Another trick about not turning back? I'm not falling for that one again. Huh? Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? <laughs> <laughs> 